Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Going through the Bible the fourth time in the last 35 years, we come today to the Old Testament book of Micah, Micah chapter 7, verse 1. We will conclude the book of Micah today, so get your Bible if you can so that you can follow along with me verse by verse. Study the whole Bible with me anytime you want to, as much as you want to, at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Those four series that I mentioned are all archived for you. So all you have to do is choose, click, and listen. Choose the series, the book of the Bible, the section, the chapter, and listen. All you need to do is bring your Bible to the BibleVerseByVerse.com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Micah 7, verse 1. Woe is me, for I am like those who gather summer fruits, like those who glean vintage grapes. There is no cluster to eat of the first fruit or of the first ripe fruits which my soul desires. Verse 2. The faithful man has perished from the earth, and there is no one upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net. God is saying that looking for godly people in Israel is like looking for fresh produce after the harvesters have already taken it all away. Nothing. Just no good fruit, no holiness in this land. Three, that they may successfully do evil with both hands. The prince asks for gifts. The judge seeks a bribe. And the great man utters his evil desire, so they scheme together. It was a real racket. They do evil real well. They're skilled to do evil. They're eager to do that which is bad. For the best of them is like a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hinge. The day of your watchman and your punishment comes. Now shall be their perplexity. The day of punishment that the watchmen, that is God's prophets, his faithful prophets, few that they were warned about, has come. Always does, you know. The people didn't believe it would happen. The false prophets who tickled their ears with feel-good messages all the time said it would not happen. But they should have believed the word of God. Not their false prophets who were in it for popularity. And they sure should not have believed their feelings. Five, do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your bosom. In other words, don't trust anyone. That's what God is saying. That's a pathetically sinfully charged society where God has to come down and say, don't trust anyone. It's that bad. And here's, look at verse 6. For son dishonors father, daughter rises against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. Sin had destroyed the family, in other words. Everyone was only concerned about themselves. Seven, therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Micah was second with how things were. The only thing he could do was hang on to God just as tight as he possibly could. When wickedness runs rampant in a society, godly people cling to God. Eight, do not rejoice over me, my enemy, 
When I fall, I will rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. So on behalf of Israel, Micah says, I'll make a comeback. I'll make a comeback. And he's speaking primarily about a spiritual comeback. Nine, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and executes justice for me. He will bring me forth to the light. I will see his righteousness. The righteousness, the righteousness that a few had will bear God's punishment with a humble submission. Knowing that they deserve everything they get. They still have a heart for God, this small minority. And they know that the trouble that they are experiencing due to God's judgment in the land is exactly what their country deserves. And they know that humility and repentance will ultimately cause them to prevail with God. Ten. Then she who is my enemy will see, and shame will cover her who said to me, Where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her. Now she will be trampled down like mud in the streets. Those who saw God's people in misery and scoffed, saying, Where is their God now? will know that God comes to the aid of his people if and when they repent. They will see it. Verse 11. In the day when your walls are to be built, in that day the decree shall go far and wide. The day that God fixed strict boundaries between Israel and the rest of the world will be irrelevant one day, says the Lord. 12. In that day they shall come to you from Assyria and the fortified cities, from the fortress to the river, from sea to sea and mountain to mountain. All the elect from all over the world will come into the kingdom of God in Christ one day. They will join the believing Israelites and be one people of God. 13. Yet the land shall be desolate because of those who dwell in it and for the fruit of their deeds. The earth here refers to the land of promise. The old promised land will no longer be the issue. Instead, spiritual Israel, the church, true Christianity will prosper while God adds people to his kingdom from all over the world, which is happening today. 14, shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your heritage who dwell solitarily in a woodland in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in days of old. The prophet prays, God bless your people like they were blessed in the good old days. 15, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, I will show them wonders. The nations shall see and be ashamed of all their might. They shall put their hand over their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. When the unsaved of the world see the power on display with Christ's return, when he comes in his glory with all of his angels, they will be ashamed. But God's people will be blessed, even better than the good old days in Israel. 17. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall crawl from their holes like snakes of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of you. Come judgment day, all the enemies of God and his people will know that they made a big mistake. But it's going to be too late to do anything about it. They're going to be big league losers by their own sinful choice. Who is a God like you? Pardoning iniquity 
and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. The greatest work of God is his mercy that reveals itself in how he forgives unworthy sinners and declare them to be righteous when they humble themselves and receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. 19. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. God tramps on our sins just as he will tramp on all his enemies on Judgment Day. He buries our sins in the deepest part of the ocean. In other words, he gets rid of them for good so that they can never arise and condemn us again. Our sins can never be a witness against us forever and ever if we belong to Jesus Christ. 20. You will give truth to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, which you have sworn to our fathers from days of old. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and that his descendants would be too many to count. The New Testament says that Christians are the spiritual children of Abraham. God has been true to his promises to Abraham, and he's just getting started. He hasn't finished yet, not by a long shot. Well, we continue on in our study through the Bible, and next time we will come to the book of Nahum. Until then, if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word. And if you would like to support this ministry financially, you can do that when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com. You can go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. And until next time in the book of Nahum, this is Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.